This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. Carl Truman was... Wow. This is Wretched Radio. That was actually harder than saying I was wrong because Mm. Carl Truman, about eight gazillion times smarter than I is, writing an article with the wrong headline. There it is. I just came out and said it. Carl Truman was... <laughs> Please don't tell him. <laughs> he could run intellect- intellectual circles around me actually faster than I can and say it. Kissing Christianity Goodbye is the title of his article at firstthings.com, referring, of course, to Josh Harris, who kissed dating goodbye when he was 21, getting a publishing deal, selling a lot of books at a very early age, which some people would say is a cautionary tale that we got to be careful how quickly we give any sort of mantle of teacher or leader to a young person or a new convert. He now has walked away from his marriage, but he didn't walk away from his faith. He didn't walk away from genuine Christianity. Thus, he did not kiss Christianity goodbye, Carl. Instead, Well, depends on how you define Christianity. That's precisely what I'm going to do. Here's, I don't know how you Presbyterians well, define it, but show, Christianity then. is... Well, you're just defending your fellow Presbyterian, aren't you? That's what this yes. is about, isn't Here. it? Well, okay, I'll mean? settle this. I'll explain to you what Christianity really is. Okay, I can't wait to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> the world is breathless. Go. It's a... Well, here. You need one of these. Well, it's this radio. Blue book. Okay, yeah, it's a Bible, or is it's that a Lutheran a hymnal? hymnal? Of course, you need it your is. Bible, need the Book of Concord, you're, the, set, you're in, good to go. But not in that order. You probably need your Book of Concord, and then your Lutheran hymnal. Just need and then your Bible. And you're good. Mm-hmm. Well, Do you and have the Bible. All of the 95 it theses that. memorized. I'm just curious about that, Tony. I don't. Nevertheless, Sorry. I define Christianity as you know, Christianity. He didn't kiss it goodbye because he was never among us. He didn't depart from us. He was never a part of the genuine Christian faith. And that actually is what Carl Truman's article is all about. We haven't talked much about Josh Harris simply because I'm not Gnostic. Unlike so many evangelicals these days that seem to know what everybody else is thinking and what's going on in their heart, (coughs) social justice people, I, I don't know what happened with Josh Harris. I don't know. And so we haven't taken any time to speculate. Carl Truman, I think, he, he brings some insight that is helpful for us, and I mean helpful for us. Not so much dish on Josh Harris, but that could be helpful for us. Carl Truman kissing his system away. That's, that's exactly what he did from Carl Truman. While Harris seems to be making a clean break with his past, the style of his apostasy announcement is oddly consistent. This is going to hurt a little with the evangelical Christianity he used to represent. He revealed he was leaving the faith with a social media post, which included a mood photograph of himself contemplating a beautiful lake. That's exact. He got kind of the side shot from behind as he's staring out into a hopeful future. The earlier announcement of his divorce used the typical postmodern jargon of journey and story, He also called his losing of his system deconstructionism. Uh, It was very postmodern-y. Truman. And both posts were designed to play to the emotions rather than the mind. Life, it would seem, continues as performance art. Now, does that mean that we shouldn't use the gifts that God has provided us for the propagation of the gospel, whether it's Instagram, texting, social media, YouTube, whatever? No, it doesn't mean that at all. But it does mean we can certainly misuse it for nefarious purposes and we can perhaps present ourselves in a way that is more stylistic and contemporary than Christian? Carl Truman, in a sense, that is exactly how and why the YRR, which is the Young, Restless, and Reform movement, was so successful. Savvy harnessing of fashionable idioms and marketing strategies. Again, There ain't nothing wrong with being in the game. But if that is more of your content than Christ, you're going to have a problem. 
exceptionally clever use of social media, large and well-organized conferences, and professional-grade websites, all fronted by attractive personalities and brilliant communicators. I can't stress this enough. There's nothing wrong with that per se. Orthodoxy, though, as performance art, that's the problem. And Josh Harris was both a product of and a player in the YRR project. In other words, there could be people who played those roles who were not qualified for leadership. The Bible defines for us the character and the qualities and the attributes of somebody who is an elder or a leader. You don't need that in social media. You need to look good. You need to communicate well. It better be well lit. You need to know the current trends of what is palatable media consumption by this particular generation. And you're in the game. You're a leader. Write a book with the right title. Boom, you are there. But that doesn't mean that you're qualified. Back to Carl Truman. He was the product of and a major player in a wider movement that is proving increasingly problematic. Uh, perhaps I, I don't I don't think it's the use of the tools as much as the abuse of the people who are allowed to use those tools without having qualifications and perhaps the blessing of a local church. Who's telling these people that they should be doing this, writing these articles, publishing these books? Is, is anybody vetting these folks? And it is seemingly becoming increasingly problematic. Here's my opinion. This is my opinion on the YRR movement. Well, I think everybody, whether you are reformed or not, was celebrating it. Good. A lot of young people are bending conservative. That can't be a bad thing. It appears, however, it was a bit of a trendy thing. And furthermore, any sort of movement, in my estimation, that is not thoroughly defined is inevitably going to go off the rails. Inevitably. Uh, I, I don't have a scientific study for this. It's some observation, some experience, that when a group of people get together and say, well, you know, we're just going to disagree on a bunch of stuff, but hey, it's just about the gospel. I don't think that's enough to hold it together. Now, I don't think a coalition can keep coalescing when it's a, a reductionistic Christianity. When it is a mere Christianity, I, I don't think it's enough to sustain it. And arguments are inevitable. Splits, almost a guarantee. And in this instance, we're seeing more and more why are our leaders falling, aren't we? Back to Carl Truman, as a product, Josh was exploited by those who saw him in a marketing opportunity and consequently gave him far too much exposure and responsibility far too soon. He was used, writes Carl Truman. I wonder if any of the leading YRR lights have spent a moment reflecting about whether they and the culture they created bear any responsibility for this mess. Uh, you wonder, too, does the publisher of his book say, you know, maybe we didn't do this as thoughtfully as we should have and as biblically as we could have? They returning any money from I Kiss Dating Goodbye? As a player, writes Truman, Harris might be qualified to do the evangelical church one last favor. Oh, this is good. He can expose the behind-the-scenes shenanigans, the money made by at least some of the leading lights, and the power wielded by an unaccountable few of big evangelicalism. They would seem a more important contribution that would seem a more important contribution than emotive talk of personal journeys, gobbledygook about repentance, detached from any notion of God, and the continuation of life as performance art. The body count in the YRR leadership is already high. Harris might be able to ensure that the leaders who are left will operate with more humility, transparency, and integrity in the future. Zing. We certainly hope so. One last note on Josh Harris. This was written by a man who knew him well. You're probably familiar with Mike Ferris, leader in the homeschool movement, knew him well, wrote him a letter. You've walked away from your marriage. That's grievous. It's worse that you walked away from your faith. But some insight, I thought, that was helpful. What you have said yourself can be fairly summarized as this, Josh. 
You thought your faith and your marriage were based on formulas. They never went deeper than that. Jesus says about people like you in the last day of judgment, depart from me, I never knew you. You know that this means you never actually knew him. You know that this means you were immersed in the culture, but you weren't in Christ. You never actually knew Jesus. It gives me heartache to say these things to you. And Jesus will take no pleasure in pronouncing those words in judgment on you or anyone else. You haven't walked away from a relationship with Jesus. You walked away from a culture that you were raised in. So, you are left, Josh, with a decision. Jesus still loves you, and so do countless others, and I will love you no matter what. Jesus is real. He doesn't want you to return to your prior formulas. He wants you to come to him for the first time and learn to love. Let's pray that Josh Harris does. And until tomorrow, go serve your king. Oh, imagine my surprise that you're still here. Hey, if you'd like more Wretched, because apparently you've got enough free time, would you like this video? Subscribe to this channel, and we will give you Wretched till it's coming out of your nose.